all the metal that we have, we have been able to do our own metal fabrication. And so we use what you see here to learn as well as serve us. For example, we use the farm to teach the children while they are giving us labor and learning on the farm. Number one, it has helped us even to recover from the, let's say, what happened to us in COVID after being locked up for a long time. We are sure the children will have milk because the cows survived and they were able to feed on the farm. So what is special about this school? It's not an ordinary school. It's not just about getting the grades. We need a healthy mind which gives a child to have that inner drive, motivation, to be having that love for self, to love your country, to love your family, and be able to add value. For example, if a child has several skills, they make wine, though they don't test, they, they are able to make soap. Today, liquid soap is very easy to make. Let's say 50,000 worth of product, you can produce, let's say, um, jerry cans worth 250,000. So you can see the profit is at about 100%, which is very rare in businesses. Like cutting hair, all these kids have families, and all families have heads. So they already have a starting capital when they go home. Then what happens is that when you give this skill, it inculcates discipline into a child. Today we have many teenagers who are asking government for jobs, but what are the available jobs? Look at the population of 45 million and look at the government jobs which is 30. The most beautiful things is that we are giving this skill as a give back to society. The skills we have learned, the time, let's say you would have to go and study for six months or a diploma in another place, but here we are able to produce a child and right now as I speak, DIT has written to us as they do senior four and senior six, they will equally get their certificates with the DIT program. So education is becoming easy. We used to see this abroad. You find someone in senior four, they have like 10 certificates. Right now, the government has provided DIT to give exams to children, agriculture, if you know how to keep chicken. By the end of senior four, DIT will certify, you know how to keep chicken. You see, what, what parents forget is that we need children who are self-driven, who want to change where we are, who want to change our tomorrow. And this is put into them, you inculcate it when they are very young. And that's when you find people with passion, who love what they are doing, who love and respect themselves, and those who love and respect their families. And that's how we build a very strong country. When I go out there for holidays, I always tell them to come to St. Lucia because we learn a lot of things, especially this one of planting hair and making soap and others. I'll do cakes, sell them to the public, to my friends, do agriculture, like I can plant, I can do modern farming, plant kumawiki in a small compound, eggplant, can do banana plantations in just a small company. I learned how to trim hair, and uh, when I'm in old days, I set my own business. Like, uh, I earn a living from there. And uh, my, my parents had support me when they saw me with this skill of trimming hair, and uh, I'm the best in my home village. And everyone comes at me, and then I'm in school now, but they are worried. Because some babas there, they don't have Okay, they don't do the best, like the way I do things. I just learn from here. I have to put my skills so that other people can learn from me. I never knew anything when I trained. I told the director that now I want to plant, I want to bake, because they told me they can bake. What they bake, they eat them. I thought, ah, that is life. I said, okay, that's good. I started planting, I started baking. Now I know to, to bake chapat. I know to bake cake, and now I know to, to plant liquid soap, I can do it, everything. We have the baby and manicure. We have makeup artists, as you have seen, we have hairdressers. So the first thing I could give you is to come and explore St. Lucia. That's my first message I'll give you. The second message I'll give to girls to abstain and stay in school, abstain sex, beer groups and other things that will spoil your future because this world or this Uganda of today is, in, is within a woman's hand.
That's a conversation that came in from St. Lucia in Fort Potro. I love the part of the scaling that they added onto the entire conversation. Today I'm joined by um, a veteran journalist. I'm, I'm, I'm very honored, by the way, Mr. Wanda, to be in your presence. Mm. And um, given all that you've seen this country has gone through to where we are today, this conversation is very pertinent, preparing Ugandan citizens for national transformation. I want to start with a very, um, you know, very calm question. You, you've asked a very um, confident question. The budget was read the other day, and the president said that, to um, kekereze, we need to be frugal in our expenditures, how we spend, when we spend, and all that. And um, before we knew, the, 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 the parliament was spending, you know, billions to buy their own cars and all. But now, when it comes to us as one Ayinchi, are we frugal when you look at us from where you sit and stand with your lenses because you've been here more than I have? Are we frugal mm. as Ugandans? And even if you stay, mm. you won't overtake me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> because I'll also be advancing. Of course you are. But permit me to salute you and yes. bless you also. Thank you so much. Yes. very honored. Uh, and <coughs> I want to salute NTV. Mm. I haven't been here many times, yeah. maybe once or twice. Or I'm grateful that this time I'm with you. So I also thank you for allowing me into these pressings. Yes. Now, Ugandans are not frugal. Mm. No. Why? No. How, for, for, for starters, how are we not frugal? It's not in our psyche. Mm. Um, if you look at the way we spend the little we have, mm -hmm. uh, government, government, the, the way our leaders spend mm. is a true reflection of, of who we are. what we are. Okay. Um, <coughs> when I was a young man, mm. a young boy, mm. uh, during uh, President Amin's time, mm. many of the Ugandans who fled to Kenya mm. would be identified in Kenya mm. as Ugandans. By the way they spend. Because they, buy, they are the only ones who buy a crate of beer. <laughs> and step on it. <laughs> now, they would immediately know that That this is a Ugandan. Uganda. And guess what? It's still up to here uh, today. Uh -huh. Of let people go in the bars and they put a lot of, you know, they sell liter per liter per liter and, they, and they'll be drinking. Then we have drinks that come with fireworks. I don't know that you've seen that. You know how to speak Luganda? Yes, I do. Even those who are troubled. Yes. When they go to a bar, they say, mm. <laughs> Now, <laughs> now, <laughs> now, now, <laughs> Frugal. The, we are being frugal. Okay. <coughs> that is why all the internationally accepted standards of uh, measurement, mm. I don't think they apply to Uganda. Because we are not. For instance, mm. the most expensive phones are with the poor people. That's true. So if an economist came and merely checked types of phones bought, mm. that one is likely to draw a conclusion that people are okay. I think that is what is misguiding some Based on think. phones. We are in middle class income status. Even middle class <coughs> income is okay. Oh. Except you may not realize <coughs> that you have it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Ugandans don't keep accounts. They don't keep they records. They don't, yeah. We are bad Th at th records. That's why we keep basking somehow in that aura of either mm. extreme agony or well-being. Mm. But when we are neither. You remember the lockdown? Yes, I do. Uganda is the only country mm. where people ask for relief food for in areas. That means that person didn't get relief food and didn't die. But he's still demanding. No, demanding it is okay. Mm. But the fact that you stayed without it yeah. means there's something peculiar in this country. <laughs> we need to undo. Uh -huh. Yes. That's why the president was <coughs> saying that we are still lucky we have food. I, I was this government would be in trouble if there was no I, food. I, I was coming to that. Do we have so much abundance that we are not frugal naturally because um, it's easier to survive in Uganda than any other part of the world? And that partly accounts for our lack of thinking ahead. Mm. Because we say sort of stay in a comfort zone of yeah. sorts. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to give you an example of uh, how easy it is to, to qualify for, for middle, middle income. Mm -hmm. I was challenging a border border friend of mine, one of my blood, mm, blood, the blood, yeah. blood one. Yeah. I told him, <coughs> I spend about 10,000 shillings on you mm. every day. Mm. 
Now, 10,000 shillings every day times 360 mm. is how much? 3.6 million. Yeah. How many dollars are those? That is uh, about, about 1,000. 1, yes. uh -huh. mm. How far away is he from middle income status? He's already in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Da, but, but does he realize he it? He does not realize it. Because that whether he challenged him with that, he, <coughs> he kept quiet for some time. He was wondering whether he's rich without knowing. Now, 1,000 is not rich. Yeah. But the Wazungu have set it as a standard. Yeah. And we are following it. You're living beyond $1,000. Uh, that fellow mm. is a millionaire. But where are the millions? Does he see it them? They cannot be quantified. Uh -huh. mm. Where do you live? I stay in Chihuatule. Chihuatule here? Mm -hmm. You are lucky. Uh, I have a friend, Jagenda Semakula, who stays in Entebbe. Mm. He's lucky too. He's next to the airport and uh, that is the administration. Well, he hardly flies. He has, <laughs> 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 he has to come to Kampala yes. and, and not by back. air. Yes. But you imagine, <coughs> mm. there's a person, hypothetically, yeah. whom he gives a lift daily mm. from Entebbe to Kampala. Kampala. Does that person sit down to quantify how much money this one saves him? They don't. As money saved? No. So when the Wazungu say people are living on less than a dollar a day, mm. do they know the person who comes to NTV mm. during lunch time, no mm. lunch every day for a year? They don't see that. So how do we quantify that money. The middle class income and that money spent. Uh -huh. mm. So those standards <coughs> we are using are uh, quite deceptive. Yeah. When we bring musicians here from mm. abroad, mm. the organizers can even say, uh, the, the, the man has postponed for a week because they have gauged people don't yet have the money. Yeah. The free tickets go to Owana, you, uh, Sodiru, yes. Wavamno. Uh. Then all the border borders look They'll for, have to for that 200,000 yeah, to pay and, and, and pay it. Now, which economist from abroad are you going to convince that that country has poor people? There is none. Yet that 200,000 has been saved painfully. To attend such a concert. Exactly. Wow. That's how we are frugal. <laughs> <laughs> you got the fast, it's the conversation in studio with me is uh, Tony Godifawana. Joffrey. God brother Joffrey. You are lucky um, my mother is dead and the, my father. I apologize, Joffrey. <laughs> uh, we are tapping into the knowledge of this. So coming to that, mm. given that naturally we are not frugal as a populace, mm. how do we transform as a population? to understand where the country is going because the direction seems to be there are few people who are looking to the direction the country is going in mm. um, yesterday I was on my way from Kachiri and a friend of mine in the car told me that Andrew how comes I don't I no longer need to be in Kampala to get service A B C D mm -hmm. he was worried and I told him but the country is growing Times he was worried. He was worried. I thought he was happy. No, no, no. He <laughs> was he, he was worried. Okay. And um, I could tell that the worry represents quite a lot more of people mm. who are not aware that the country is transcending to different tetracords. They are not seeing that. Mm. And uh, we are still at the level like if it's not in Kampala, it is it is not worth it. How do we prepare the populace for the next layer or the takeoff where we're headed? It's <coughs> going to be tricky. Mm. Why? There are people who, <coughs> most of us can only learn the hard way. Yeah. Mm? Yes, true. Mm, I could annoy you mm. by leaking a little of what you have been telling me before we went on air. Mm. On how you yeah. disciplined your eating habits. Yeah, I first went to the edge. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. I myself <coughs> was called to the bar in mm. 1980. Mm -hmm. I was called to the bar in 1980, mm -hmm. and I became an expert in 1981. In the bar? Yes, and I persisted in it for 27 years. Congratulations. <laughs> that was risky, though. The bar was not the bar of law. Yes. It was, it was the, the bar of, of booze. Yeah. And I smoked for about the same period. Wow. It required me to contract TB and other things to mm. come to the age. To change the lifestyle. Yes, then I said, really? Mm. Do I need medical 
uh, attention to stop drinking and smoking. Mm -hmm. But it required me to reach the age. Mm. Now, <coughs> abject need is one of the things that would discipline we Ugandans. Mm -hmm. But we haven't got there and we are not likely to get there. Because of our... Be because we have... You know, there's a book by a man who traveled. Mm. It is called From Cape to Cairo. From Cape to Cairo. Yes, by it was written by Colonel Ewart Grogan. Mm. Colonel Grogan. Mm. When he came to describing costs of labor in Africa, mm. he said the most annoying things, mm. but they are very real. Mm. He said the cost <coughs> of labor in Africa should be fixed and that cost should be fixed at the lowest. Why? Then he said, everything the African native needs, he already has. Mm. What we give him in terms of money is for his luxuries. But he already has what uh -huh. he needs. Mm. That's why paid day results in three days later of people not turning up to work because they are drinking. It is too much for them. Uh -huh. mm. Now, this is very annoying. It even looks racist. Mm -hmm. But if you swallow your pride and look carefully. Beyond the layers. Uh -huh. yeah. uh. Then you begin asking yourself, did, did these people not study us accurately? They actually did. The man said, three pounds to a native African is as much as three shillings. <laughs> it is the same thing. Yes. Then he gave an example that there, <coughs> there's a, there's a, a houseboy he had, mm. and after several months of service, he, he raised his pay. Mm. That the houseboy immediately became unhappy, and then it demanded mm. that he should be paid the, the same money mm. as Arias because he was the same person. Yeah, from the years back. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, <laughs> eh, now yeah. and from then on, <coughs> he stopped being a nice worker because he had convinced himself that he was that being I, cheated. I've been cheated, yes. Uh -huh. So the pay rise did not if reflect in any way on his personal well-being. It was just mm. money. Mm. Now, in such a state of financial indiscipline, mm. you require to be <coughs> extremely needy mm. to get there. But then no government or even a patriot can advocate that. Yeah, true. So we must educate people by force. Mm. Mm? Mm -hmm. By force. And by force, you mean, are we going to go in Muchaka Muchaka back in the days of the 80s or what? I, if need be. Mm. But then uh, we are <coughs> getting beyond that. When I look at some of the students who have gone through the patriotism meal yeah. of uh, Brigadier General Mwesig and, mm. and the rest of the... They, 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 they learn a few things. Mm. Be because, you know, there's a tendency of thinking they teach them how to love them seven years and mm. sing some hymns of NRM. That's what no, no, indoctrination so is okay. Mm. Because the indoctrination mm. is imparting a doctrine. Induction. That's okay. Mm. Eh? Mm. Because w w what are we afraid of? If you have a doctrine and you want and you to put it in, in me, mm. you are indoctrinating me. <laughs> Finished. That's Let, let's not worry about that. But mm. the point is, mm. if it is about <coughs> chanting praises for NRM, that mm. is Garcia. Mm. But they teach young people to ask why yeah. and how. That's beautiful. Fix their you, uh, that patriot who has been showing skills yes. eh, mm. when we began. Mm. That is a practical thing. Mm. So what do we do? We, we look at the resources available mm -hmm. and indicate clearly to the users that these things are theirs. And they should be used. The first thing to get rid of is for Chamagiru to think that this is, this is NTV yeah. money. Yeah. Eh? Mm. When do you get into it being our money? So that you protect it and you I use I it You know? Yeah. Eh? Then you have leaders who you elect, Barieko. Mm. Uh -huh. And uh, wow. we have a big that job. That, that, that is deep. That is yes, deep then you have the NRM group which arrived. They are, they are those in NRM who also feel they arrived. And they, they are holding us on. They are relaxed. They want to give them homage. They, they don't even mind your home. They relax. Mm. Things are okay. We are in charge. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so when, when, when you talk about that, we need to um, educate our people. Our people need to be awakened to the to the occasion. The times are changing. 
the mindset change, mm. if we could take it to the media perspective, mm. given that you're a veteran journalist, the narrative in the 80s, rather in the 70s, in the 80s, was unique and in the 90s to where we are today. Mm. How should the media craft the narrative that can prepare the countrymen to get on boarded to the next level where the country is headed? <sighs> I know. But you have to answer. <laughs> are we safe? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <clears throat> Comrade. Yes. The media is a tower of Babel. True. Different languages. No. Mm. Languages are okay. Mm. As long as you can Build use the, the same mm. script mm. and you translate. Mm. But now, there's misinformation long ago we had the ministry of information and broadcasting yes now there's a ministry of misinformation mm. and broad lying <laughs> across the board hmm? Take me there. we now you call me a veteran journalist has one way of telling me it is time up no, 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 no. I'm warning no. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you should, but you've been here for, from a means time. Uh, yes. What you've should, seen should I, should, a veteran. Uh, uh, is that a charge sheet? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a charge sheet. You people have been around. But, 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 but you, you've been around and you've seen days. And what you've seen, mm. there is something unique what you've seen and we are not doing. Or we are not understanding. Help people like me in my generation of career of journalism mm. to understand how to hold their hands and the mindset of my countrymen or my generation to get on board. We, we must, we must get non-professionals out of the media. Yeah, it is painful. Personalities versus journalists. Uh, is that all? Mm. You see. When NTV begins to wait, newsroom freezes mm. until someone posts something about Uganda from Turkey. Mm. I don't want to go further than that. I hear you. Eh? I hear you. But when this entire mighty newsroom is waiting for that scoop mm. about Uganda mm. from Turkey, it's worrying. Then we are in trouble. That's true. If you have <coughs> media practitioners who think that. Mm. Fred Enanga is a source of news mm. rather than a clarification on what they got. Mm. We are in trouble. I hear you. If you have a media mm. whose source of news about Uganda is Google, mm -hmm. you are in trouble. Mm. If you have news from parliament, the most juicy items are those which an MP gives outside the steps in Payoka Bite. Mm. We are in trouble. Than the real issues on the floor of exactly. parliament. Exactly. I hear you. So why is that <coughs> possible? There is a lot of uh, underfunding in the media, in the media houses, yeah. and they have reasons. Yeah, true. Now what you do, you get someone in Maya Mungura in Busia, mm. one of my sons in Busia, Arnold. Mm. Arnold, you know not where Zanga Yoka store or Kumacha. Mm. Now Arnold drives a border border. Mm. He actually sees things happening. But he cannot file them as professional, should he? He files them accurately. <coughs> mm. But then, is that the most important story for the development of mindset in Amungura? No, it is not. Ah. Because that <coughs> fellow will never go to the district council when it is seated. Yeah. He fears to go there. So the only news we are likely to get from Arnold is about to fracases mm. and... Uh, Barwanyi Wano, ah. accidents. So... <coughs> But we are now so used to that easy sourcing of uh, information, humoristic mm. news, mm. and the public is also avid oh, yeah. about it. That's so true. so th there's a long, there's a, a long way. Whoa. You you do a sample here and ask journalists about to uh, parish development model. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you you will be <coughs> petrified. Yeah. Go to parliament. And as the MPs. Yes. Uh huh. They're a clear reflection of us. Yes. They didn't come from Mars. <laughs> yeah. So, the, the <coughs> what is important mm. is to reduce on representation of people mm -hmm. in matters that concern them. Mm. Direct involvement. Mm. Yes. Because why should people worry about a parish development model when it is concerning parish chiefs, for instance? Yeah. So what are we telling people? Mm. 
about uh -huh. mm. some people have been asking for more money for the parishes yeah mps a hundred million is not enough but now in their heads <clears throat> mm. they are going to ask their people to line up for the money that's how they perceive Th that's why it is not enough mm. Eh? Mm. yes i saw an mp last night mm. was it even on ntv <laughs> news <laughs> the fellow yeah. said mm. that the parishes in the, in the city yeah. have more fewer people than the than ones in, in the, in the villages. villages yet he represents a, a, a rural constituency that's does true. he know what he's talking about <laughs> I followed the political rallies mm. uh, parliamentary uh, uh, during Campaigns. the uh, mm. I found a rally somewhere in Gomba mm. with 14 people in that parish it was 14 people in the whole parish yes yet if you ask call a rally in Nakasero to here uh -huh. eh? Mm. So the other MP thinks there are more people in the village parishes than, than in, in the city. Ah, <laughs> now, that one, they are waiting for his word. And that is an MP. Is an MP. Add the word honorable. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> so we, if mm. we reduce on that being represented in these matters, mm. and people go to a local baraza, mm. where a responsible person will tell them what the parish development model is about. Mm. In their own community there. Mm. Not via WhatsApp. Yeah. Not, no. But because all of us are feeding them with information. We in mm. NRM will say, to have our descent. Mm. We are Kasimo. Mm. We even Kasimo. <laughs> it is not a development uh -huh. model. Uh -huh. Oh, no. Yes. And this program is going <coughs> to suffer from a lot of misinformation and broad lying. Every day, from the media and the others. Yes, uh, and the media is no longer exclusive to you and me. Yeah. It is whoever Has can brandish. Uh -huh. That's why these days, most of you have in your template yeah. an apology. Yes. <laughs> uh, always ready to touch it I immediately there is trouble. That's a disclaimer. <laughs> We're going to take a break. This is yeah. Uganda First. We have uh, Tony Owana, a veteran journalist. He says this. Uh, I have Mr. Tony Owana in here from the uh, Patriotic Secretariat Corps, and we're discussing Uganda First, the transformation of Ugandan citizen to the next layer where the country is going. We'll take a break, but remember to send me a message on Twitter. The hashtag is Uganda First, and the number will be on your screen. Send me a WhatsApp, and I will read it on how we can take this country to a whole new level, but not leaving anyone behind with regards to the mindset. Good afternoon. And a faster conversation that aligns a patriotism spirit as Ugandans. Do you love your country? Are you loyal to your country? Are you proud of your country? Do you defend your country? These are values to the core that keep us Ugandans. Now, there was a training that happened at Mountains of the Moon where students were taken through a lot of drills about patriotism. Not only that, just to make them understand where the country was and where we are headed. Let's have a look at this and later we'll return with uh, Tony Owana. I need only six months to buy a car. But my conviction is telling me that I cannot have this knowledge and cheat others. It's personal. Now, if you convinced yourself that you are going to work, you'll make fortunes. So what I'm trying to tell you, first convince yourself that you'll make money. Life has no comparison. The only comparison you have, you look at yourself vis-a-vis -vis the challenges you have in that locality. And out of that conviction, you will do the best. And the knowledge you have should always guide you. Why should I steal when I know that I can struggle, start a business, and make money? 
The other thing I want to tell you, all those who have stolen, it's a matter of time. You position your soul. You will buy what they have stolen. Know yourself. Know your abilities. Know your capabilities in relation to the environment. The moment you recognize your own emotions and how they affect your thought and behavior, then you know your strength and weaknesses and you will develop self-confidence. One big factor that should actually make us very patriotic is to know our country as we know our farm, right? We don't know. There's a lot of ignorance. A lot of ignorance from young people to the old people. Some people are born in one place and die in the same place. <laughs> and what can you talk about it then? When people talk about you today, they don't know who you really are because all of us are under formation. And today, we have different types of parents in our society. We have four parents, avoidant parents who are too busy to be with their children. We have permissive parents who allow you to do anything and get away with it because they don't have time to parent you and that's all they know. Then we have authoritative parents, then we have authoritarian. There are those parents who say it is his way and his way and nothing else. And so that type of parent develops a child who has double color. In front of that parent, you pretend to be humble. And immediately this parent turns their back, the true self version of you comes out. In psychology, we have what we call reparenting yourself. Today, you don't have to blame your yesterday. You have a new chance to reparent yourself and be the child or be the man that you really want to be. What does a parent do in your life? They guide you, they help you to keep on course, they help you to keep focused. So today, you may not have a parent you look up to, but it is your responsibility to identify someone you really admire, someone that you do anything to, live, to let their legacy live on through you. A great leader inspires others to follow them in their footsteps. We need to change our mindset. How do we live? Where are you buying a shoe from? Actually, when I find a youth who is living a very exp expensive life, my, my eyes go like, hmm. Hmm. And, and they come to you, they are trying to show you they are well off. No, they are lying. They are not well off. That's not theirs. You know they are not earning a salary. You know they don't have a credit card. You know they are not borrowing money. They are either stealing or manipulating or using themselves to cut short their lives. You have commonly heard what they say that the youth are useless. Is that true? We are changing the norm and the definition to say that the youth are useless. You are not useless, but we have used you less. So what patriotism is doing is to unearth the energy in you, the potential in you, the God-given talents each and every one of you embeds and carries around. Do you know who you are? Do we have a motto? For God and my country. Meaning that you must be selfless for this country. Go beyond yourself. So, number one role for you, the young people, in socioeconomic transformation of this country, is give yourself. Be patriotic. Give this country your energy. Because young people, you are like wet cement. Everything that lands on you lasts forever. So this time we are choosing to land patriotism. To plant patriotism. To instill in you, inculcate in you, values and norms of national importance. Then you can sit in your university and think, what can I create that will add value to the development of Uganda? You are in a time when IT is high and you are very, very able to create these solutions. There are many apps which come up and I know one of you can create an app that can make the whole world to know about these 52 craters in, 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 in Uganda. Do you have any other country that has 52 crater lakes? Read and research more 
And if you find that they are only in Uganda, then already I'm giving you a project that can bring you money either on YouTube or in the tourism world. So when you hear concepts like social economic transformation, don't leave them in academics only. Translate them on the ground. What do they mean? Social, economic. Social, you can find you are interacting with soldiers. That is social change for the best. Because it used to not happen. When you see buses and trucks are moving throughout the night, that is economic transformation. Because there used to be robbers on the way. What are they carrying? They are carrying food. That is economic transformation. What do they bring back? Mabati, cooking oil, soap. What? All of them made in Uganda. That is economic transformation. So those are the advantages that come with peace and security. And peace and security is an enabler for you. Go and turn out our values. Go and turn what we have taught you. Join elective positions. I see many of you can be ministers. Many of you can be MPs. Of course, I can stop from there for many reasons. Eh? <laughs> but join elective positions. We need people who love their country in parliament, in law, in local government. We don't need people who are just going there to increase their salaries. The three days we've been here have been very useful to us because it has really sharpened our mindset and it has brought us to understand that we are not supposed to go out to the government crime looking for jobs but rather the capital is in our hands. It has really taught us to be responsible citizens and to love our country. We've learned much to do a lot with engagement with the community and from here we are very impressive. We thank the initiators and especially the office of the president for having thought of university students. And as university leaders, the 200 who have been trained, we shall disseminate this information to the areas, to our areas of residence and other uh, colleagues of ours who have not been here for the social economic transformation of our country, Uganda. <laughs> Well, all this happened at the mountains of the moon, and I want to congratulate uh, the Patriotism Secretariat for organizing this kind of engagement. In the conversations, you heard quite a lot what they gave, what they learned, the values. The youth have not been used enough. We have been used less. That sunk in so much. Some people have sent me some WhatsApp. Let me read some messages there coming in from some Ugandans. This one says, as a Ugandan, we just need salary scale set standards for everyone. For example, at least first earners should be getting 500K, regardless you work with private company or government. That is a minimum wage. Thank you. Othieno from Tororo says, my biggest worry is that we are moving on a propaganda of no ends. Mm -hmm. That worries. This one says, I'm glad to be part of joining this group. Uganda first indeed. How do I join the patriotic group? Um, uh, that is uh, Sabid Omara. Thank you so much. This one says, there is no way we can make Uganda first when we still have people who think of their families. I have traveled, but you wonder that people on the road that the pedestrian gives respect to a driver, is that patriotism? Patrick Segal mm -hmm. is wondering. Good morning, sir. This is Yona from Toronto. Greetings to all listeners and viewers. Thank you so much. Mr. Wano. Toronto? Uh, Toronto is on the, the other side of the world. I, I, that is in Canada. Of course. I've been there mm -hmm. via the Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> I have been there physically. It's a beautiful country. <laughs> Mr. Wano, uh, when you see what happened in uh, Fort Porto Mountains of the Moon, mm. do you relate to what they were saying? The parents some are bystanding parents yeah. others are authoritarian yeah. others are democratically running homes mm -hmm. no that's what you want andrew go ahead and do what you want demo and we have those who are intentional should that worry us the way um, the, the the headmistress from saint lucia said first of all uh, when i was watching that video mm. 
uh, I saw uh, Brigadier General Mwesige. Yes. I, I didn't see Tibbs, media yeah. Tibbs. He Maybe wasn't he was there. Mm. But I saw old veterans like Captain Mukuye. Yeah. Uh, those people have given their all to the country. I am tired of seeing Mukuya as a captain. W w uh, he should be promoted. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, and Sensong has been a lieutenant for too long. I am a civilian, I can afford to say that. Yes. Yes, mm. so I think they deserve some upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> he is watching, he will hear yeah. that. Mm. Now, mm. that lady who said... The youth have been used less. Yes. Recently, mm. I challenged someone who was accusing me of being used. Mm. By who? By, I think, the NRM. Mm. I'm always accused of being used by the NRM. Mm. I, I, Why I, did we draw the line between being a parachute and being the NRM? Why should you draw it? Mm -hmm. Because I don't think the two must be different. Mm -hmm. No. It's like I can love my country, but I'm in NUP, or I'm in DP, exactly, exactly. Mm. exactly. Mm. So I don't see why we measure patriotism in terms of where you are. The yardstick where we belong. For me, patriotism is simply towards mm -hmm. unconditional love. For the country. No, 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 don't mm. even add anything else. Mm. If your father, whom I have heard a little about, and yeah, whom yeah, I have yeah. learned to respect. A very good man. If he was <coughs> a drunko, Mm. who beats your mother. Mm. Would you set a condition for him being your father? No, he's still my father regardless. Despite or even because of doing those things. Mm. Do you have a choice of selecting who your father should I be? I have, no. Based on the misbehavior of your father? No, I don't. Now, that's why patriotism is so painful. Because mm. when you put appendages to it, mm. that let me see how one behaves, then I decide to love Uganda. You are going to be in trouble. Yeah. Because the benchmark you are using maybe doesn't love Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> eh? <laughs> so this commitment without yeah. reason, patriotism mm. is like love. Yeah. You don't reason. You just find yourself This one himself. is mine, mm. and I'm willing to... Shoot anyone who comes against the country. Finished. Mm. Then you can begin reasoning later. Internally, because yeah. you can talk to your father and say, mm. but the business of having a referendum on whether he should be your father or not is madness. Yeah, it, it, it. So the business of saying the NRM, mm. FDC, NOOP, what do you think God thinks of us when we think we Church of Uganda are, <laughs> are greater than the Muslims? Do you really want me to go there? <laughs> no, 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 no. You just imagine God Almighty I, I, I is there imagine. watching us. Mm. Church of Uganda thinks they know God better than Rubaga. Mm. But, but God looks like they and says, look at this. Yeah, well, That's you. how Uganda looks at us. I hear you. As we think NRM is better at loving Uganda than this. Let's forget all of that for it once. Bring it to the context. Mm. The youth have been used less. Yes, exactly. Now, let me go back there. Thank mm. Thanks for. Mm. That's what they call moderating. Mm. I told this person uh -huh. that it is only useful people who can be used. Mm. And we ended the conversation. Done. Yes. Because you should be worried if no one is trying to use you. Because you don't add value. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you might as well say they have used you, but maybe they haven't paid you. Mm. But if they don't use you at all, You're then worrying. you simply don't exist. That's mm. what Kajabago used to call biological substances. Mm. Not humans, but not animals. Mm. Somewhere there. <laughs> 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 so I, am, I want <coughs> to salute that comment by that great mm. teacher. Mm. The youth have been used less. Yeah. Now, the youth should therefore be used more, mm. but for things that add value to the to country, the country yeah. and their own well-being. Mm. I don't agree with the people who think mm. that we should not love our families. Mm. The human instinct means that at my home it is Victoria first. Mm. That is your wife? Then the battalion which came afterwards. <laughs> hmm? yeah. That is natural. Yeah. Anyone who pretends that it is different from that, Mm, is a liar. Is a liar. Mm. But this does not prevent me mm. from working for the country. That's true. Yo William Seven always says that the greatest beneficiaries to his private income are not in Rushere. Mm. Because everybody in Rushere has cows and milk. Mm. They don't buy. 
the customers are in Buganda, uh -huh. abroad. Uh -huh. mm. So that is the spirit. You told me that your father brought you up yeah. patriotically by making yeah, you. He made me, he made tell me, me the story he, again. He made me go around the country uh -huh. from Savio, then he takes me to Mwiri, then he takes me to Soroti, then go to Kivali, then back to here. Now, mm -hmm. I went to Savio. <laughs> Good to see you. Savio. Yeah. And uh, I want to salute one of our teachers who is still teaching, yeah. Mr. Lawrence Nkola. Yes, very humble. He man. taught me recently in 73. Recently? Oh, yes. Recent. And I went through the same guy. Oh, and yes. Recent. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 what a day. Yes. Yes. Hmm? The value. And Nkola is still teaching. Mm. He's not on your payroll, which yes. worries you young people mm. that are on our vehicle. Mm. Your vehicle, but he's teaching. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because that's his calling. Okay. Now you see, mm. what did Savio inculcate in you? Discipline. Yeah. At Savio, we were not allowed a single thing from home. Never. That's why we managed to study with the people like Kasim and Achibinge. We never realized they were rich. Yeah. Because there was no chance. There were grounds, level grounds. Kabisa. Mm. There was no chance of showing how rich or how poor you, you are. are. That's yeah. the environment. Mm. Now, the situation today Aj. fights patriotism in one way. How? You were born in Chiwatule? Yes, I am. If you were born in Chiwatule mm -hmm. and you study in Chiwatule, mm -hmm and you work in Chiwatule, mm -hmm. and you marry Chiwatule girl, <laughs> and you die there. <laughs> what do you know about Uganda? Zero. Now, our fathers were in the civil service, mm. like my father, the late Alfonso Okelo, mm. one. He never worked in a public service job in Bukedi. He was all over the country. He was in Chigezi, mm. Bunyoro, mm. Uh -huh. mm. Jinja. Mm -hmm. That's where he found a certain girl. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but now you hear districts demanding how a mirim jaffe. Mm. That's why even thieves in public service, because they are born in the same district, mm. the people keep quiet. <laughs> so, so now, these young children, mm. I wish we would now mm. get to a situation of where mm. they do their patriotism in Imbali. Yeah, the, we have exchange regions. And uh -huh. mm. Because that was the concept of national service in the 60s, yes. that people should get out of their cocoons and yeah. know each other they better. They see the country. The, those linkages are very, very, because for us, we are. We they, they, they made you. For us, we are reaching our expiry date. Yeah. <laughs> but the young people, and Museveni, mm. I think, got frustrated with us. Mm. That's why he hatched that project mm. for young people. To understand the country uh -huh. better. So now young people must get out of that cocoon mm. and extend their tentacles. They will find life easier. Well, that is uh, Owana Tony and um, the conversation. We can never have enough time to have this. But we are going to have more time to we, actually talk to Owana. We sat in parliament and removed the term limits. Yes. We, we, <laughs> we, we can do the same way. But here. for this body, because we're having a time limit. <laughs> but we can. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> But thank you so much for gracing us. Okay. Thank you so much, all the viewers who have been a part of this conversation. Thank you so much, the National Patriotism Secretary Copsa, the ones who are the great sponsors of this conversation. You love your country. Oh, there is a message. Thank you, Andrew, for hosting the show today. Your guest is very productive and honest, and I like the veteran journalist has spoken, as my late father would have put it, um, given a use to watch him diligently on UTV communication has been compromised in this country and it's good he's still open as in the previous years uh -huh. uh, that is at Sibela Yenle Kaka John is my name greetings comrade Owana NTV and Ugandans way forward government must invest in these trainings before it's too late governments must delink patriotism training from the NRM have such trainings arranged as severally around the country, especially for our organized youth groups such as in schools, and invite seasoned trainers from various backgrounds and professions, including religious, cultural leaders, rational politicians from oppositions, that take the training to villages and talk to people in their local languages. Nice. There are so many qualifying Ugandans that would ably do such training. Remember people like uh, Major Roland Kakuzam Tale? Great teacher. Ah. 
Mm -hmm. A very good afternoon, a team of the mark from India. Being used less but not useless, that falls within the ambit of youth empowerment. And, th and is this a powerful statement when taken in thought and acted upon? Thank you so much for watching from India. Uh, Kakande Fahad uh, from Umbarada says, I think Uganda um, to the next level should start with the most lowest citizens, especially we the people in rural areas because our village people are not sensitized about the government set goals. And you know, villages are the backbone of the same Ugandan economy. This is because agriculture is the backbone and people who are highly involved in it are not aware where the country is heading and the economy. Uh, so how can we promote economic transformation when the rural people are still stagnant and civil? That will actually Ooh. be worked upon uh, because of time. I want to thank you so much for all the feedback you've given us. I, for one, I stand for my country. I protect my country in all my works I do. In the digital frameworks and the footprint I put on the digital, it's to protect my country, not to expose my country to the fire that wants to actually consume my country. It's your job, too, to protect your country. I'm Andrew Chamagiro, and have a lovely afternoon. Mm -hmm.